Hi, Mark Rubin here from Infinity Ward, executive producer on Call of Duty Ghosts. Let's start by talking a little bit about what your goals were heading into Ghosts uh, in terms of trying to top things you've done in the past with Call of Duty. Well, actually, when we originally started, we didn't know we were doing Ghosts, to be honest. Uh, we kind of actually had the idea that we would figure out what a Modern Warfare 4 would look like. So for us, once we started developing a story that was definitively not in the Modern Warfare universe, um, you know, ghosts became a thing. You know, even before it got named, it became a thing. And uh, we realized it wasn't going to be a Modern Warfare title. Um, so for us, really, ghosts is about new. It's about having, uh, you know, a, a new experience, something that we haven't really seen in Call of Duty. And that was, um, we hope people take away from the story of that sort of, you know, destroyed post-apocalyptic United States that's not the big superpower that's struggling against a big another country that is a big superpower, another group of countries actually. Um, so it really, I hope, you know, for people who play the single player, they get a new different experience out of, out of the story and out of the gameplay. Speaking of gameplay, can you talk a little about how you guys are introducing Gra zero gravity in one area, but also underwater and what that opens up from a gameplay perspective. Yeah, absolutely. Those are two of my favorite levels, actually, or the several of the levels. Um, uh, I love the, the space combat. I love the I really love the underwater combat. Um, the really cool thing there is, again, is it, it adds um, a 3D element to the world. You know, instead of fighting guys that are either horizontally equal to you or, you know, maybe up in a window or something, these guys are floating around, moving vertically as well as horizontally. And so your whole mechanic of of where you are in relation to your enemy can change. So sometimes the best cover isn't in front of you, it's maybe above you and you wanna swim up or, or move up. Um, it also uh, allowed us to do a little bit more fun stuff with just, you know, interactive cover in a sense. You know, cover's moving sometimes, you know, and it's like floating through the water or floating through space. Um, and, uh, and there's some, I know on the underwater level, there's some cover that, it, uh, that you can sort of destroy and move and sink. Uh, while you're playing, so uh, it added a really cool, fun element to, uh, I think, Call of Duty that feels different from uh, your normal combat that you're used to. This game was developed and created a long time ago, but what was it like to see Gravity come out afterwards? Because there's <laughs> a little bit of similarity in, in, in a big picture perspective. Yeah, that was actually really interesting. Um, it, yeah, we first we saw the first trailer for Gravity, you know, long after we had pretty much done all those levels we were interested in um, you know in uh, final content creation phase and uh, it, it was really I think beneficial from our standpoint because it really excited people about the stuff they were working on even more so than we thought um, realizing that that when you're so close to the game it's harder to to see that bigger picture from far away and I think gravity seeing the trailers really helped us um, realized that what we were working on was really, really cool and interesting, and I think people are going to love it. The other thing that stands out in this game is your dog, Riley. Can you talk a little about what you feel he adds and how you guys brought him into this story? Sure. Uh, Riley is definitely one of my favorite characters in the game, um, not only because he's, you know, obviously a cute, adorable dog, but because of the what we learned um, about him and about service dogs before uh, before putting him in the game, so early on we had the idea of putting a dog in the squad, but we didn't really have much in the way of information or uh, you know, idea of how that would work. It was it was mostly just like okay, well he'll kind of work with the squad and be like an AI guy that just attacks enemies that are near. Um, and then once we actually brought a uh, Navy SEAL in with his uh, with a Navy SEAL service dog and the equipment, we started to realize how important uh, the dog is to uh, uh, the servicemen and, and to the military and to, um, to the squads that use them. Um, not just on a, uh, a, a technical sense of, you know, they can offer bomb detection, they can actually offer also um, uh, enemy detection. You know, you're working, you're working your way through some fields or a street or something. Uh, they're going to get, they're going to be alerted to enemies nearby uh, or people nearby um, via smell. And that's a, that's a, if you think about it, that's a, a level of detection that our servicemen have never had before. Um, so, uh, but not only that, it's the emotional aspect. 
the dog is is beloved within the squad. You know, I had, we had one soldier say he would take a, a bullet for his dog, um, and uh, so there's a really strong emotional connection. He's part of the team. He's part of. He's in the barracks when they're in the barracks. You know, and he's. He's there for emotional support as well as technical support. So really interesting stuff came from what we learned about the dog. Um, the equipment they use, all a big surprise, all the, the camera and the vest, all that. We had no idea going into it. Um, and then, uh, and then you know, we got to work with them uh, mocapping and, and you know, recording the audio and, uh, and just, you know, doing, even just doing PR stuff with them. It's been great. It's been a lot of fun.